Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Poe Murray, and I am the chairwoman of the Newtown Action Alliance and the Newtown Action Alliance Foundation. Standing here next to me is one of the, our strongest allies and friend, Reverend Michelle Morgan, who has provided a home away from home for the gun violence survivors and advocates here in St. Mark's. Reverend Michelle Reverend and I would Michelle like to I welcome like you to, welcome to the 10th annual, annual National Vigil, National Vigil for, for All Victims, all victims of, gun of Gun Violence. Tonight, Tonight we are honored, to be, honored to be joined by courageous, by courageous gun, violence gun violence survivors from more than, from 22, more than 22 states, states committed, elected committed elected leaders and their staff, and their staff dedicated, local, dedicated state local, state, and state, and national GBP national groups, GBP groups and, fearless and fearless advocates and volunteers, and volunteers who have made a commitment to work together to end the gun violence, gun violence, violence crisis, crisis in, our nation. in our nation. Tonight's visual, Tonight's visual service, visual service anchors, anchors the nationwide, nationwide vigils, vigils to end gun to violence end gun in communities in across, communities America, across America, America, America during the month of December. Month of December. We thank all our partners for hosting the local vigils to support the survivors from your community and your states to remember their loved ones who were taken too soon and wounded by guns. July 22, 2022 was the 10-year mark of the Aurora movie theater shooting. And one week from tonight, December 14, 2022, is the 10 year the mark 10 year of the Sandy Hook tragedy. Sandy Hook tragedy. Since, 12 Since 12 moviegoers movie were, were killed and 58 others were injured in Aurora, in Aurora. And, 26 and 26 children and, children and educators, educators were killed, were killed by, gunmen by gunmen with weapons, with weapons, of, weapons war. of war. More than more one than million, million Americans, Americans have been shot. Have been shot. And more than, than 400,000 400, Americans, Americans have been killed by been guns killed by gun in gun every by corner, every corner of, our nation. of our nation. Tragically, Tragically guns, are now guns are now the number one killer number one of American killer. children. Of American children. children. Gun violence, gun violence is a public gun health gun emergency, gun emergency and we need and all hands on deck hands on to deck end this end disease. This, end this, end this. Therefore, Therefore, we are joined, we together, are joined here together here on Capitol Hill, on Capitol once, Hill again, once again to honor, to honor with, action, with action, to shine a light, shine a light on the devastating, light, devastating epidemic, epidemic of gun violence in our nation, in our nation. and to renew our to commitment renew our to continue commitment to, fight to fight for transformational, for transformational change, change that is needed that to, is save needed to save lives. That change, that change has begun. Has begun. President, President Joe Biden, Joe Biden has, passed nope, has passed executive actions, executive actions and Steve Dettelback has, has been confirmed as a permanent, as a permanent director, director of the ATF. Of the ATF. Fifteen Senate, Senate Republicans and fourteen House, House Republicans went against the, went gun, against lobby the gun lobby and passed the Bipartisan, bipartisan Safer, Safer Communities, Communities Act. Act. The That was the first, was the first set of life-saving life gun, gun bills passed and, passed and signed into signed law into in 28, law in 28 years. years. Other crucial Other bills, crucial like the bills, Assault like Weapons the assault Ban weapons and, Ethan's, and law, Ethan's Law, to keep kids to keep safe from kids unsecured, safe guns, unsecured guns, guns, were passed were in the passed House of Representatives with, representative with the leadership of Speaker, Speaker Pelosi. Pelosi. We are now waiting are now for the Senate, waiting to, act. The Senate to act. More change, change is imminent because, because of you, of you. All, of you. all of you, and we already, and we have, already public have public opinion on our side. On our side. It, will it will become untenable, untenable for any elected, any elected leader, leader, leader to stand on the stand wrong on the side wrong of history side because, because our, children, our children who have been forced to live in unsafe, in unsafe communities, communities and, traumatized and traumatized by active shooter drills and lockdowns 
will vote and begin to vote. They will no longer tolerate inaction, and our movement would sadly continue to grow as more and more Americans are impacted by gun violence. On, ha on, on behalf of the Newtown Action, Action Alliance, Alliance St. Mark's, Mark's, and over 100, 100 partners, partners, we thank each thank one of you here in this church, and those of you, watching, those of you watching this vigil service at home, service for, at home for, for being in our fight to end this gun violence crisis. Now, now, it is my, now, privilege, it is my privilege, to privilege to introduce Senator, Senator Chris, Murphy, Chris Murphy, who has been, who a, has champion been a champion of change, of change for, Connecticut for Connecticut and beyond, and, beyond, and, Jackie, and Jackie Haggerty, Haggerty who, was who was a survivor from Sandy Hook School shooting, school shooting 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. I, am I am so pleased, so to, be pleased to be here tonight to join, tonight, to join my, friend, my friend, my hero, my hero Jackie Haggerty from Newtown, Connecticut, Connecticut, to introduce, to, introduce to, you to you tonight our honored, our honored guest. Honored guest. We are so, yeah, so pleased to be pleased here in the presence of so many friends, so many friends advocates, 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 Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker members, of Congress, members of Congress, public, public servants. Public servants. Public there's probably not another probably public, not another public figure, in the world figure in the world than, than Joe, Biden. Joe Biden. He's a public, He's a public figure, figure beyond all figure others. Beyond but when, all I, think others. when I, think I think of my president, the image that lives the image in the front, that of, that front of my brain isn't a speech he gave or an election he won or a bill he passed. What I remember are two conference rooms nearly 10 years ago in Danbury, Connecticut. Senator Blumenthal and I had invited then Vice President Biden to come to Connecticut in the aftermath of Sandy Hook to talk to our state, our grieving, our hurting state about the path forward. After the speech, President Biden asked for time with the Sandy Hook families, and it won't surprise you that he told his plane to wait for hours as he sat in a conference room at Western Connecticut State University until he had held every hand, hugged every grieving parent, and wiped away every tear. He was two hours late for his plane when he walked out of that room. But at that time, of course, the cameras had all left, the reporters were gone, and standing outside that conference room wasn't Joe Biden, the vice president. It was Joe Biden, the person. And what happened next is something I'll never forget. He was already two hours late for his plane, but he didn't leave because somebody told him that in another conference room across the hall were a different set of families, families that no one in America had really heard about. Moms and dads who had lost their sons and daughters to gun homicides in Bridgeport and New Haven and Hartford. Joe Biden knew that their pain wasn't any less debilitating than the pain of the Sandy Hook families. And so he told his people that he wasn't going anywhere. He walked into that second room and he held every hand. He hugged every crying parent. He wiped away every tear. And then for hours, I was there, I watched this happen. He sat in a chair and listened to every single parent tell one of the most powerful people in the world the story of their child, who he was and who he wouldn't and who he would have been if not for our nation's gun laws. When Joe Biden's term as vice president was over, he could have looked back on a career well done, a public life that made an enormous difference. He deserved a rest. And I guess I don't know all the reasons why he decided to offer himself up for service again this time as president. He probably knew that he was the only person who could lead the country out of these dark days. But having seen firsthand how much the pain of those parents from both Sandy Hook and Hartford meant to him, I think I know that he believed he still had work to do. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first gun safety bill in 30 years, would not have passed without Joe Biden's leadership. It just wouldn't have. And what I find so amazing about our president is that he didn't wait a week after he signed that bill, before he started demanding that Congress do more, universal background checks and a ban on assault weapons.
And so on behalf of Senator Blumenthal and Congresswoman Hayes and the urging of the vigil's organizers, we invited President Biden to join us here tonight. To many, it might have seemed like a long shot, but a lot of us knew that it wasn't because we've seen President Biden when the cameras are on, like when he moved the country almost single-handedly to action after Buffalo and Uvalde. But also, we've seen him when the cameras are off. That's why we're so excited to have him here today. But the introduction of President Biden is not mine, but it will be Jackie Haggerty. Jackie Haggerty is a hero of mine, as I mentioned. She was a second grader at Sandy Hook Elementary School in December 2012. Her classroom was just across the hall from those classrooms we know so much about today. Today, she is a courageous survivor and she is a courageous advocate for tougher common sense gun laws. Jackie Haggerty. My name is Jackie Haggerty. I am 17 years old and I co-lead the Junior Newtown Action Alliance at Newtown High School. A week from today will mark the 10 years since I survived the Sandy Hook school shooting. At the time, I was only seven years old. I heard and saw things no child, no person should ever have to see. It was impossible to imagine that 26 innocent lives were killed in the same building I was in. There were moments in that classroom where I sat worrying that I would die, worrying that that door would burst open and I would never go home to see my mommy, daddy, and my siblings. But that door wasn't opened until first responders had come to save us. That day I survived because the shooter armed with an AR-15 chose the left instead of right in that hallway. The last 10 years have not been easy, but living my life honoring the victims has helped. Being kind, like Principal Don Hawksrung, and choosing love like Jesse Lewis and so many others. Tonight, family, friends, and survivors gather from across the country to remember the people that were taken too soon by gun violence and make a commitment to honor the lives of those we love by taking action. For the last decade, our childhood has been stolen by gun violence. Guns are now the number one killer of children in America and we are asked to be brave while hiding under our desks, in our classrooms, while too many elected officials lack the courage to pass common sense laws to save our lives. Thankfully, we have a president who does more than send thoughts and prayers. He has already passed more executive actions on gun safety than any other president, and he has relentlessly pushed for a ban on weapons of war. He understands that we are living in fear and we have suffered enough. It is my privilege to introduce President Joe Biden, our gun safety champion. Thank you. I'm sure if the lights are on, all of you, instead of me, there's a lot of people in this church that uh, I know and uh, have not only uh, consoled one another, but have taken time to console me in the loss of my family. Jackie, thank you for the introduction. More importantly, thank you for your courage. Folks, uh, events like this are hard. They're hard for all of you. Because it brings back the very moment that everything happened, no matter how many years pass, no matter how many years go by. And it brings it back, but your voices matter. Your voices matter a great deal. Director Morgan, thank you for welcoming us to St. Mark's to remember, to heal, and to 
fulfill a purpose. Ten years ago, this nation's vigil was created here in Washington to pray for the souls of Sandy Hook and their families. Ever since this, that time, this church has been open its doors to more victims and more families of a violence that rips at the very soul, at the very soul of this nation. To all of you here tonight, it's under different circumstances, but I know a little bit what the loss feels like. It'll be an anniversary on the 18th of this month. That I lost my wife and daughter and nearly lost my two sons when a tractor trailer broadsided them. And it's not long after that, an anniversary of losing my son. I know that feeling. Everyone's different. But I know that feeling. You know, uh, it's like a black hole in the middle of your chest. You're being dragged into. And you never know if there's ever any way out. And what I admire so much about all of you is you show up and remember. Because remembering brings it back the very moment that it happened. But all of you in all of you at the time, and I spent several days up in Sandy Hook and then went back. At the time, it was, uh, it was astounding to see, even then, the courage that was represented. Jill and I met with you, prayed with you, and have worked with you. We've seen you turn pain into purpose. Together, we made some important progress. The most significant gun law passed in 30 years, but still not enough. Still not enough. Even as our work continues to limit the number of bullets that can be in a cartridge, the type of weapon that can be purchased and sold, the attempt to ban assault weapons, a whole range of things that are just common sense, just simple common sense. But you know, uh, we did it before. You may remember, in the 90s, we did it to help the very people in here led by Speaker Pelosi in the House and many others. And we did it, and guess what? It worked. The number of violent and mass murders reduced were significant. A lot of people's lives were saved. You know, uh, and we can do it again. <laughs> Scripture says the light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. To all of you here tonight, you are the light. You are literally the light. And your loved ones, your friends, they're the light. And they'll always be with you, no matter what happens. They're always with you. How many of you ask yourself, what would my son or daughter want me to do at this moment? They're in your heart. They're part of you. They're always going to be with you. And at this National Vigil for Victims of Gun Violence, I ask the country to join me in a moment of silence to remember every one of them. And we ask God to give us the strength to finish the work left undone on behalf of the lives we've lost and all the lives we can save. May God bless you all and keep you safe. Here's my back.